I had friends in the music community who were utterly devastated and felt emotionally destroyed when Bowie died. Others of them, different tastes, felt the same way. Uh, people who professionally made money out of creating tunes and singing lyrics, they felt the same way when Prince passed on. And there is a difference for people who appreciate the music or the art, they view the art in comic books, and how they feel a loss. And I don't mean to, to offend anyone by illustrating verbally that disparity. Then there is with people who looked up to someone and they could honestly say, without that somebody doing the art that they did in comic books, the rest of us, or at least a subset of us, would never have broken in. We may not have bothered to try. And even if we did bother to try, without these people who have passed on, particularly Neil Adams, we would have been less. We would have been a joke compared to anything else that we bothered to manage to do one-tenth as well as he did. And we see things that other people don't see in the art because we're having to analyze it all the time. And Mr. Adams, Mr. Adams did so many things that other people might consciously be unaware of, but unconsciously and subconsciously, it would go into them because of the genius, and I almost never use that word, the genius of Mr. Adams, who also, by the way, not only had a massive career, which m many of you will know about, but some of you won't, in the advertising industry. That's how basically he made most of his money. And he did comic books because he loved the medium. And he said that on numerous occasions. But he also did the, the newspaper strip for Ben Casey, which was an incredibly popular television series at the time. And a lot of people think, eh, Adams, I can take him and leave him. But you know what? These are people that often really love the John Byrne Wolverine, especially with the hair on the arms. Guess who was putting hair on the forearms of tough men first? Neil Bloody Adams. And that's not the only thing he did first. I mean, there were times where he introduced, and this is not what he's known for, but he introduced true psychedelica into a lot of page design. And he absolutely revolutionized the use of color in comic books. He actually showed that you could take fine art and um, advertising agency highest principles of what colors work for the best psychological effect upon the reader and translate that into something beautiful. And this is something people don't talk about. The advertising agency will put colors together and choose a certain color scheme in order to con the drones, con the zombies into buying a pet rock or some cheap piece of crap fast food that's going to kill you faster than a bullet. Faster in your mind, but not in your veins and your arteries. And Neil would take that principle and he would put that principle into simply creating the joy of experiencing visual art for someone who paid 15 cents for newspaper, n newsprint, newsprint. He was one of the first people to really stretch the notion of how do we angle the panels, what shapes can the panels be, what is the interrelation of one panel shape to another. Um, he revolutionized the double-page spread. It, 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 imagine, imagine, and I will use this not as hyperbole, but as an accurate barometer of the difference that Adams made, particularly to those of us who drew, those of us who would put... 12 hours a day with no food, no rest, with a pencil on the Bristol board, and then have to pick up the ink afterwards, because Mr. Adams was also a magnificent master craftsman and, and, dare I say, virtuoso of the nib on the page. But when you look at people who came before, even great artists like Steranko, even magnificent artists like Kirby, even uh, superlative artists like Gil Kane, Bearing those guys in mind, leaving 
them aside, most of what you would get, to put it in science fiction terms, was Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and some of the lower tier levels of 1960s Doctor Who and the original Lost in Space. And when Mr. Adams comes in, he brings 2001 A Space Odyssey by Kubrick to his game. And he's not doing it to show off. He's doing it as a gift to all of us. And that is why I was so bloody broken up the other day. And that's why I've not been able to make this little mini piece of rambling for anyone else who bothers to care. Probably be five people who listen to it. Doesn't matter. The important thing is I'm showing respect for a man who showed respect to the intellect of everybody who appreciated illustration. And that's all that really matters. So I'll catch some of you in the chat later today. We know there's a chat about Neil coming up. And I thank anybody who bothered to listen this far and not tune out because I got a little bit overly intense. Keeping things thematically honest. Thank you all. Bye-bye.